Whoa! Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. This right here is the V-Fly Short Stopper. They sent this to me to show you guys and to try out, so thank you V-Fly. And let's kick things off with a little demonstration here because I think that will be the best way to show you why this could possibly be a very, very important item to have with your uh, RC quadcopter building stuff. So uh, what we have here is a short circuit situation. What we have is I have this little wire. It's a very small gauge wire between these two alligator clips. And so the way that this works is we plug in the battery to the short stopper. We make sure that we have a green light to show that it is working. And then let's say, imagine we were going to plug in our quadcopter and it had a short in it, so it, it, it basically had a connection directly between the two battery terminals. And watch what happens when I connect this clip right here. So check this out. Oh my gosh, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Well, this, this light turned red, so that is something that happened. But our wire is fine, it's not even warm. So now, let's get rid of this and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens and watch closely because this is going to happen fast. Now, without the smoke stopper, the V Fly short saver, let's connect this. Whoa! That is not good. Now I have to turn on the fan and ventilate the room because we just let out the quote unquote magic smoke. And uh, this could be from your quadcopter. What happened there is this wire got so hot that it, uh, it caused the, the coating on it to smoke. And this wire now is just like, uh, just crispy. So, just a crispy black wire, and that is what you would end up with. Um, but this, could, instead of just being a little wire, this could be your flight controller, this could be your video transmitter, uh, wherever you have a short circuit uh, situation. So, that is something that you want to avoid, and one way of doing that is the V-Fly short saver. So let's talk more about this and I'll, I'll let you know why I actually am interested in using this now when before I was not. One thing I wanna cover here just really briefly and just in a super basic way is what is actually a short? What is a short? Because the thing is, is that a lot of times I think people will confuse a short with an open. So in this example here, let's just say we have our battery, we have our motor. It's super simple. It's nothing like a quadcopter, but we have our positive wire, we have our negative wire, and they connect and make the circuit through the uh, motor here. So a short would be like, let's say a piece of solder or just a piece of wire or something caused a connection to happen between here and here, and it bypassed the motor. So you can kind of think of a short as like a shortcut, like the electricity wants to take a shortcut. And so what can happen is um, since you don't have any uh, resistance to this shortcut here, basically you're gonna get the full battery power trying to go through this wire or this piece of solder or whatever, um, or your electronics, or it depends on how the short is actually configured. But basically, you just have the battery. It wants to send all that juice from, from one side of the battery to the other, and then you get a lot of heat in this area, and then it will eventually, you know, melt and catch on fire, and, you know, bad things will happen. Bad. That's bad frowny face. Um, and so that's not good. The difference is if you have an open, which a lot of times if you have a short and then it melts something, it might create an open. But an open is just when the, your wire is not connected for some reason. So sometimes people say like, oh, there must be a short because something doesn't work. But a lot of times it's actually the case that it's actually an open right here. This is an open, an open circuit right there so it's not actually connected and that's why you don't actually have any electricity flowing through the circuit so that is what a short is which is that guy right there and we don't want that so that is why we have uh, options like the v the v fly short saver to prevent all this current and this heat from going through and destroying our electronics and here's the manual that comes with it. So there's all the specs for you. You can pause that and take a look at that if you want to. 
Now, of course, I'm sure, like me, all of your builds are perfect and you never have to worry about any solder overlapping um, other pads or anything like that because you're just super good at that. And honestly, I've never had, well, except for that, that I guess that one when I tried to do like the large motors on the, uh, the five inch motors on the three inch frame. Oh shoot. Oh, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. I guess that might've helped to have this uh, short saver. But for the most part, I haven't really had that problem. And so honestly, I just haven't, like this is the first smoke stopper that I've gotten. So I haven't really cared that much about smoke stoppers, but there is a really good feature to a smoke stopper that I had not realized. And it's a great safety feature. And that is that since this is a current limiting device and it will actually shut off the, the power if the current gets too much, what you can do is you can actually power on your quadcopter. So like here, for example, I have a uh, four cell battery right here. We could connect this to our uh, smoke stopper because we want to connect it first. And then we have a green light there. And then also I'll just mention we have the blue light. That means that it's a two amp cutoff. And then if we flip this switch right here, it's a, uh, the blue light goes away and then it's a one amp cutoff. So one amp, I guess the V fly says that should work fine, but maybe for larger stuff, you might need two amps. And that's because, you know, all these electronics, they are going to draw some, uh, some amps, some, some milliamps worth of power, um, just by being on. If we connect this to the quadcopter here, now here's, what's cool is that right now I don't have propellers on here, but if you did, uh, if you, let's say you were just, I don't know, you were lazy or you just needed to check your OSD or something and you had your propellers on and it would just take you like a second and you don't want to take off all your propellers. If you have this connected, um, if you do inadvertently hit the arm switch, this is what happens. It basically will shut it off. Uh, because it will draw too, too much current. Now, it depends on you, uh, what kind of motors you have. They might actually uh, spin up, which could be maybe useful to check the motor direction. But if you have your blades on, you know, you got to watch out for that. Now, of course, um, if you're going to start messing with stuff like and, and you're really going to try and um, you know, mess with the motor direction or something, something more involved, you should just take your propellers off because this like that's that's going to take you a while and you just don't want to risk it any more than you have to. So take your propellers off. Um, if you're going to be doing something, you know, for an, ex an extended period of time, but if it's between you, um, you know, just plugging a battery straight into here with the propellers on, uh, because you don't want to take them off and using this thing, then it would be definitely better to use this. Yeah. So a weird thing that people have mentioned is that the four cell battery, um, will not allow the motors to spin. And, and I've found this to be the case, at least with my particular quadcopter. So if we, any, let's say we put it to the two amp setting, we plug in our quadcopter and it works fine. And by the way, I have had a few times where I plug it in and it says that there's a problem, but then I unplug it and replug it and then it works fine. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, so we're in the two amp setting. We have a four cell battery and I'm going to try and arm it. Oh, I got to put the switch down. I'm going to try and arm it. Let me show you this thing as well. And that's that's all we get we just get a little twitch from the motors and then and then it shuts off the power so it's i mean it's good it's doing its job but the the odd thing is that when we connect a three cell battery we actually are able to spin the motors let me show you that here so uh in, and i think um only in the two amp setting as well so two amp setting Everything's working fine. And then we flip our arming switch, flip the arming switch, and we're able to arm the motors. So this way, you know, we can tell, you know, what direction they're spinning. Um, if we wanted to, again, the idea is that the props would be on, but you, you I don't think you really want to be messing around with, with spinning the, the props when you when you have all this stuff connected anyway. Um, but here's the thing is say that somehow this does happen and then you bump your throttle, it will shut off because it will draw too much uh, power, too much, uh, draw too many amps. And so this thing will just totally shut off the power to the quadcopter. I mean, there are no, there are no lights on in the quadcopter. And I have also, there are pads on the back of the 
unit here on the back of the board. Basically, if you short these pads, you will uh, th you'll get a little bit more time before this flight this not flight controller before this board decides to shut off the power. Um, but I have tried both of those, the S and the N pads, and I have not um, noticed any difference in, in as far as being able to spin up the the motors with a four cell battery. It still does not uh, spin up at all, but it still works with the three cell. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but the point is, this is a great extra safety feature, safety, you know, safety gap thing to have um, in case you do need to turn your quadcopter on briefly to check something um, and you have your propellers on. So I, I'm really happy about that. And I think, it, you know, it definitely is, um, I, maybe I've just been lucky in terms of uh, building quadcopters and not having any problems with them. I think it would definitely be a good idea to use this uh, for any new builds or that sort of thing. You know, when you're when you're trying to test things to make sure that they work. So it's a great little uh, fail-safe safety feature to have. It's also cool because it has XT60 and XT30 inputs and outputs, and they are interchangeable. So, if, like for example, say I wanted to uh, power. You, you say I want to use this three cell battery, this large three cell battery with a XT60 uh, output connector. And then I have this little tiny board here, which is supposed to be on the Cinecan, but the Cinecan's in pieces right now. And this has an XT30. And if I wanted to um, power these, I could just use this as sort of like a little uh, power or, you know, co uh, conversion, connector conversion. So I could actually power the board here with the. Uh, XT30, so you can see it, it's lighting up and it's powered and all that good stuff. Uh, I also think that it would be nice to have a switch somewhere on the board to actually shut off the power, you know, to the output, because that would be super helpful if you say if you have a receiver that you have to you have to press down the receiver and plug in the battery at the same time. If you had a switch on here, maybe like a little rocker switch or just any kind of switch, that would be useful because then you just press that button, flip that switch, and then you get power to your receiver and everything. So that could be really nice. Wha there you go, folks. That is the V-Fly Short Saver. Overall, I think it's pretty good. I honestly didn't know why I needed a smoke stopper before they sent this to me, uh, but now I do. And the reason why is because I looked up Joshua Bardwell's video of about what is a smoke stopper and why do you need one? And I was like, oh man, that could be really useful. So I'm glad that they sent this to me. Um, this goes for about $12 right now, 11 or $12, which I think is a reasonable price. I'll have links to places where you can buy this in the description. And when you use those links, you'll be supporting this channel and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you guys. And I will see you again very soon. And don't smoke your quadcopter stuff, okay? Yeah.